Right folks, I'm trying again and I've gone straight to my desktop this time because uh, it seems to be uh, playing games with me again with Facebook, so apologies for that. Let's see if we can get this working. So, and so as I say, uh, the online workshop tonight, um, we're going to be having a little look at, um, sorry, a lot of ums tonight. We're going to be having a look at the kits collection because this month Stampin' Up! has got an offer on the kits collection and it's buy one, get 50% off the second one. So one of the cards that we're making tonight is using the kits collection. Then I'm going to show how we can still use uh, some elements uh, from something that's similar to a kit but a little bit more versatile then we're going to be moving on to use the same dsp and adding another one and then we're finishing with uh, another quick project that has just got a little something different for it so hopefully this is all going to work and all going to record i really really do hope so tonight um as usual with my online workshops if you purchase anything from the online workshop or via the online workshop using the host code that is in the, the thread, then if you purchase anything at all, you'll get a thank you card from me. If you spend over £30, then you're also going to get the ideas tutorial bundle that I contribute to every month. And if you spend over £50, you're going to also get the make and take pack that we've got tonight. Maybe just slightly different, as you'll see. And if you spend over £70, then you're going to get a little pack. Let me find where I've put mine. A little pack of DSP. And I've put mine down somewhere. I had it handy. So I'll have a little look for that. Um, a pack of... Uh, 24 sheets of 6x6 DSP. Now, it will be retired, um, but it's going to be a mix. It might have got some DSP in it. It might have got specialty paper. Here we are. So this is just uh, an example of what you might get. And there'll probably be a few embellishments and or ribbon in there as well. So, like I say, that's for anybody that wants to purchase uh, tonight. The workshop will be kept open until 10pm on Sunday so if you're catching this within the next few days on replay then you can still take advantage of this. Okay so let me also just remind you or let you know um, that we've also coming to the end of our mini catalogue, the January to June mini catalogue ends at the end of June and at the moment we're in our sale phase so at the moment it's the uh, sort of retiring items and some of these are carrying forward to the new catalogue if you've got a new catalogue you'll already have seen some of these appear in there but even the ones that are in there for example this Hello Beautiful bundle this is carrying forward, but you won't be able to get it with the 10% discount. So I wanted to draw your attention to that tonight. We're actually going to be using this bundle. Um, some of the other bundles that have carried forward, you won't get the 10% discount. So it's worth just having a little look to see if there's savings to be made by getting them this month. Uh, and of course, some of the retiring items, some of the items in here, are actually discounted by up to 50%. Right, so I'm going to start with a kit collection card. And on Monday, I already shared another card from this, which was this one. So this is the Sentimental Rose Kit. And if I just bring it in, there is a full walkthrough of this um, on my blog there's a, a video link that takes you through but I'm going to make a different card from this tonight if you get a card kit or make and take pack from me it could be any one of the three cards that are in here so 
we're going to be using, I need to pull out some of the items. So we're going to be using these. And actually that is the make and take that I need to keep on one side. So we're going to take one of these envelopes, uh, envelopes, having a bad night here. One of these pre-made cards, you get full instructions but you don't have to follow the instructions. Uh, the other thing about this card kit is you've got a lovely box to package up the cards in afterwards. I'm going to show a few of the other examples of what you could choose if you're wanting to go with the kits collection uh, a little bit later. It, these kits are absolutely fabulous because they've got everything in that you need. The only thing that you might need to add is a pair of scissors. Um, so that's the, the only thing that I would say. And let me just, and I do like to use a bone folder. This is personal preference. You can just fold this. Uh, and if you've got a clean ruler, you could just use a clean ruler for doing that. So that's another option. So in this uh, kit we've got these stamps actually we don't need the twine for this one um, for this particular card we're going to be using the flower now you can take these off and put them on the block clean it uh, if you're new to crafting and don't have a stamp cleaner then a baby wipe will do um, just to be careful if you're using, I wouldn't use kitchen towel unless it's one of those really strong ones because it's liable to leave uh, flecks of tissue on the, the stamp. So I would just warn against that. In the kit you get the little grey granite stamping spot. And we're just going to ink up by tapping lightly. And you want to tap lightly several times over this so that you don't get lines left by the edges of the ink spot. So we're going to do that and then we're just going to turn this around whichever way you want it. And we're going to stamp it on the edge, the corner of the panel that comes pre-printed like that. So you can see we've uh, put some scrap paper or something behind so that you don't spoil your work surface. Um, so there we are. Now I'm going to cheat now and use my own blocks because I find them more comfortable. Uh, the great thing though is that this is fabulous if you are travelling, if you're going on holiday, if you're going out for the day, if you're going and sort of watching the kids um, doing games or something like that and you want something to to just do a bit of crafting then this is lovely because you've got everything in here that you need uh, and to be honest at that point I would make do quite well with the uh, the block that comes with this so there I've got my uh, printed and stamped uh, elements now and I'm going to take we've already got a little piece pressed out this is like a corrugated card and it's just to give us something that is a little bit uh, different to go on our card front so I'm going to stamp a sentiment and I just need to bring my box back for the labels so I do like to stamp them in situ, uh, but you won't have that option, I'm afraid, when I send, if you get one of my kits, it will just come through as it is. So being pressed out of the, the backing. So I'm going to use the, the best wishes stamp. And the lovely thing about this is that there's a best wishes and a happy birthday and they work great together for inside and outside the cards. So 
so that will work for that and you've got extras in here um you don't need all of these this makes three different styles of uh, card three of each card right so we've also got these little blue dots which are fabulous and i'm going to pop some glue dots now and if you want to follow along on the instructions it shows you it shows you the block that you've used which stamps you're using um, those little dots that you've got there are glue dots these ones are dimensionals and it shows you how to assemble the card so it's showing me that i'm going to be using four glue dots on here and i do like to use my take a pick tool uh, if you're new to this then and haven't got a take a pick tool then a simple pin safety pin or something like that or even the point of a pair of scissors works fine uh, you can just lift them up with your nail if you've got a nail as in a fingernail um, but i tend to find that the glue dots then stick to my fingers so i prefer to use my take a pick tool or as i say just a needle or pin or something so I'm going to fit those glue dots on, pop this over in the corner and I'm standing up over this to make sure that I can get it fairly straight. As always, I like to turn over and just press from the back so that I don't smudge my ink. We're going to pop a couple more glue dots now on the back of here. And actually, I'm going to put three on. I think it shows two. It does show two on the, but there's extra. Don't worry about the, the fact that uh, you're run out. There should be enough to be able to put the odd extra blue dot on. So I'm then going to pop that on there. I'm actually going to line that up against the edge there and also in the box we've got a few dimensionals just a mini strip of these dimensionals and we're going to pop a couple of these on the back of our sentiment here hi sue hi lynn oh, i'm seeing messages now so that's nice I know there's some people out there. So, and then I'm just going to pop that. They've got that overlapping a little bit, so I'm just going to go a little bit above like that. And then to finish, we're going to pick a few of these enamel dots. Right, that one's lifting up from the backing behind it. So don't worry about that. If that does happen, what I would suggest doing is just simply lay that down. You might need a spot of glue for this. To be honest, I think it should stick to it, but I'm going to use a spot of glue. It's going to look white to start, but it will dry clear. I've had this happen once before so we'll just pop that on like that and I'll show how to try and avoid that happening the best way to do it is just curl the plastic so you can see the edge is lifted up and that's really what I ought to have done so like I say curl the plastic until an edge of the dot lifts up and then you can pop something underneath to just grab it. And there is our card. Now, also in the kit, you do get matching envelopes. So let me grab 
an envelope for this and I'm going, I'm matching these colour wise. So we've got a, a pale yellow lining and there we've got our envelope for this card. And the thing is, of course, you can still decorate it inside with your stamps as well. So I'm going to grab the ink spot again. And I did this with the, the one on Monday. And I've only done the corner because I'm only going to stamp the corner. Hi Pat, if you're there, I'm seeing Sue mentioning you, so nice to see you Pat, or oh, nice nice to have you here with me, should I say. So, and then I'm going to go with the happy birthday. Just in case you've not seen, sentiments in this one, we've got congratulations, thank you, happy birthday, thinking of you, happy Mother's Day for you and best wishes. And we've also got this little spotted stamp as well so this is something that you can use for decorating as well so i'm going to grab the happy birthday because i've used best wishes on the front i'm going to go with the happy birthday for inside there we are and again i'll just stand up now, I just recommend that you just hold the card down and you might even want to put something on it to keep it in place um, because it can wiggle about as you stamp. So there is my card. And now I'm also just going to, let's take that off there, grab this spotted one. And I'm just going to stamp a little border up the side of my envelope. And you can sort of use this, like I say, however you want. The great thing about this as well is that you can stamp it uh, and colour in that beautiful flower with your colouring medium. So if you've got pens or uh, watercolour pencils, anything like that, you'd be able to stamp it and colour it in. Right, so that is the first card. Like I say, if you get the make and take pack from me, then you may get this design, you may get this one and there's actually a third one that you could end up getting. So like I say, the card kits are absolutely fabulous for sort of on the go crafting. Well, let me bring in another one. So this is one that's going out on my blog tonight. Um, this is a kit that I made with my team some time back now actually. So, and you actually get four of each of these designs for the light the candle. And it's the same idea. With this one, you get your coastal cabana spot. You've got a bunch of sentiments, uh, birthday related. Um, I've still got some bits left over, as you can see. So, um, let's bring out, there's one of the cards and there's the other uh, and of course when you've finished with these when you've made up the cards etc you've still got the stamps and the little ink spots as well so dead handy um, if you're going with something like the one that I've just shared with the sentimental rose then another thing that you might want to do, um, if you like I say, if you're going away, then you might want to just pop in a few sheets extra 
of some basic white card. So if I grab them, so if if you pop a few sheets extra, a basic white card in there, and whatever your colouring medium you've got, then you can stamp a bunch of these and colour them in, you can cut them out, etc. So, like I say, it's great for a bit of holiday crafting for those of us that can't bear to be away from our crafting for too long. So, let me put these out of the way now. If we have time, I will come back and show you another kit, but I don't want to run out of time. So, we're going to move on to another card. And this one, I'm... Using, let me get these out of the way. I'm actually using the Tea Boutique cards and envelopes. Now, uh, these are a great way of sort of moving on from a card kit. <clears throat> and in particular, I love these because of these envelopes. These envelopes are just gorgeous. So let me move the catty out of the way. Move that pack out of the way and of course these are the new ink colours so we've got the Tahitian Tide, the Sweet Sorbet, Parakeet Party, Starry Sky and Orchid Oasis so those are just the envelopes with the uh, lovely flowers on and these are your card blanks so they've got a little bit of pattern to them but not anything to um, flamboyant so let me show you what we're going to turn one of these into again if you get my make and take pack you might get a different um color way so the one that i've already made up is this one so that's what i've already created and we're going to do it the opposite way round, colour-wise. So I'm using, again, the Tea Boutique DSP. And the great thing about this particular pattern is that it matches the flowers on the envelopes. So it's absolutely ideal. Um, this will already be pre-cut for you. And you choose how you want this on your card. That's probably going to be a little bit close to that edge, but if you want to go that way, you can do. You can go this way, or you can do as I did on the original and have it that way. I'm going to go this way with this card. And we've got a couple of strips of sweet sorbet. So let's first of all glue this on. That's my, there we are wet glue. Thanks Sue, just sort of reading. Lovely bright and cheerful kit. So I'm just going to put a bit of wet glue down here and make sure that the card's opening the right way and then I want the straight corner as it were to go into that corner so I'm just going to pop that on there and slide that to the edges like that and actually I've realised that that might make things a bit difficult I should have gone a different different that that one should have gone up there because now my card's not long enough, so I'm going to have to cheat and get a bit more card out. So, so just check that. Let me grab a little bit. Have another one. Because I've actually cut these to go a short one and a long one. And the thing about this is that it really doesn't matter. Uh, how they meet here because we're going to cover that up so I'm just going to put a bit 
bit of glue along like that and lay the sweet sorbet like that and then this way I, on that one I had actually got them lined up properly but I just want to show that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you don't line them up exactly because it's going to be hidden so and all I'm doing is just putting the card up against the edge of the DSP so this is a way of cheating as it were so that we're not actually using a whole load of card for this so the best way to do this is flip it over and just trim from the back so just follow the line of the card and trim away the excess so like I said we've actually got that bit but not to worry at all because we're going to cover it up and I'm actually going to use that happy birthday stamp and just give it a quick clean with my stamp and scrub just to as I say remind you that if you've got stamps from the kits it's worth getting them back out to use for other cards so I'm going to use happy birthday and stamp that and of course it doesn't really matter where but let me bring in the hello beautiful set um, because when I did this one, this one is, um, it, it could be for any kind of occasion really, just something that calls for a celebration, which could be a birthday, it could be a congratulations card. And the nice thing is these, we've got these little abstract designs that can be anything that you want them to be. And I just decided that these little flowers would work quite well and I went a bit paler so I just stamped it off once and then stamped it to get a paler look so ink stamp off and stamp again ink stamp off and stamp again I'm just going to rotate that round a little bit like that So we're then going to add this. You could pop this up on dimensionals. I'm putting this one on flat because I want to keep this reasonably flat. So these are die cut with the Beautiful Shapes dies. So together with the Hello Beautiful set, uh, this is where you can get 10% off getting both of these together. So I just want to press that from the back. And then grab some dimensionals. So if you get my make and take pack, then these will be die cut out for you. And then I'm just going to pop that over there like that. And I'm using here the, let me grab these are the 2022 to 24 in colour matte decorative dots as you can see I've been using quite a few of these um, and they are ombre so you'll get a different shade in your pack it might be a dark one it might be a light one um, this one that I did I used the parakeet party ones and you'll get a little bunch to be able to use as you want uh, you can use them all on one project or you can spread them over the other projects that we've got. 
So I'm just going to grab another little one and let's see if we'll go there. But what I liked about this was that it actually kind of picks up the colour of these other flowers. So we've got happy birthday and we're going to go with the, this calls for celebration. Uh, and I wanted to just show how easy it is to sort of layer these up. Let me go out another block. But so I'm going to use the parakeet party what I would recommend is that you do this and let one layer dry before you put anything else over the top so again I don't really want that that bright so I'm going to stamp it off once and I've just spotted a hair this is the problem with having my doggy in my craft room there we are and because I've just scratched that, I'm going to ink it and stamp it off again. And then just stamp that there. So it's quite pale, actually. Um, and that's not going to take too long to dry. So let me have a few blocks off. I'm running out of blocks to, to use. So. And these shapes are great for doing these sort of outlines and of course they they also work with the the dies as well. So let's Turn that over. That's probably drying enough. If you've gone with a darker shade, let it dry for a bit longer before stamping over the top. If you don't, all that's going to happen is that the, the ink's going to bleed when you stamp this over the top. And because we're using something that is the text, if it bleeds, it might be a bit more difficult to read it. So there we are, we've got a nice little card there and matching envelope. And as you can see, then this is the sort of different way around that you can do it. But as I said, apologies because I put this one on the wrong way around. I should have put the wide edges to the corner. Uh, because there'll just be enough of the card in the pack to do a short edge and a long edge rather than two longer medium edges. Uh, that's just to make sure that it fits in the envelope okay. Right, so we've taken the tea boutique paper here. So that was one of our new papers here and as you can see we've got lots of different patterns we're going to take another pattern from this tea boutique now and mix it with some in color designer series paper so let's put those out of the way and pull in our next project so again we're using the in colors this time we're going with the starry sky and I've already pre-cut these. Now what I did was go with three inch deep pieces because this DSP is six by six. And I'm not sure. Yes, I've got some of it still here. So this is the tea boutique paper. It comes as six by six and you've got a few little teapots that you can use if you fancy doing the teapots or as the teacups um, or teapots and lots of nice florals as well. So that's sort of one side and then you've got uh, more subtle designs on the other. So I took 
a different pattern and just cut the paper in half. The six, but the other DSP, grab some of it here. Um, the ink colour DSP is also six by six, six by six. So again, I've cut it to three inches deep. And then these pieces are one and a quarter inches wide. And I did that so that I could get these little teapots um, out of them. So I just trimmed to either side of the teapot. Rather than just cutting at one and a quarter, I made sure that my teapots were on there. This is Sweet Sorbet um, card again, and what we're doing, let me find my finished card, here we are. So I've actually used two patterns of the DSP, one with teapots and one with teacups, uh, to make this card here. And I just chose Tahitian Tide to go with it, two different patterns of but you can choose whichever side you want with these. So what we're going to do is just arrange them as you want them on here so that you've got an idea of the layout. And to put them alternate like that, but obviously you have them however you like. There's no right and wrong. So, and now, having decided what my layout is, I'm now just going to glue these in place. So you can use whatever sort of glue you prefer. I'm using the wet glue so that I can move it around a little bit if I need to. And I'm just going to try and keep the margins about right, sort of top and bottom. Uh, maybe just nudge that over a little bit that way. And what I'd recommend is doing your outer ones first. And then you can spread the two inner ones in between as needed, as it were. So, and like I said, you've got a few of these dots from earlier. So if you've only used three on the other card, you can use another three on this one. So like I say, use any, and, and this pattern works, this card layout, should I say, works really well with any other sort of papers as well. So this is just one of those layouts that you can reuse. And you may well see it coming up again soon. I might even copy the layout next month with some of the papers that we've got coming up. Because we've got some great new papers coming in. So you can see that I've been able to just slide that in between the others that we've got. There we are. And now I'm going to pop these up on dimensionals. You could put this flat on the card front, entirely up to you. But I quite like a little bit of dimension to my card. Making sure uh, that it's well supported so it's not going to uh, bow. If you use too few dimensionals, it's, it's likely to bow on the card front. So I'm going to pop that on. And of that, leaving a little border along the bottom. Now I've taken one of the, the die cuts from here, this one. And I don't know whether you can see this well enough. Um, it... Hi Laurie, I've just seen that you're watching. Um, 
you, I think you can just see that it's embossed as well as die cut. So, lovely dies these are. So, this time I'm going to do this as a thank you card. I've already got my stamp, which is from this set. And I'm going to use Starry Sky. And just stamp the thank you on here. Now, you might find if you've got these dies and stamps, you might want to stamp it and then die cut it. Um, as you'll see with this one that I did earlier, if it goes over the embossed line, it can leave a little bit of a gap. Depends on whether that bothers you at all. This one I actually managed to stamp tonight so that it's not really going over a little gap. So that's worked quite well. Now, for putting this on the edge, what I quite like to do is just snip the edges of my dimensionals, pop those at the base, make sure you've got the sentiment the right way up. I can peel that off and I can pop a little bit of wet glue on that edge so that it overlaps just a little and it's all at the same level like that. Then on the inside I did a similar sort of thing that I did just now with the uh, parakeet party but I used the sweet sorbet this time so I I chose that one I'm going to go with this one this time and the little scribble beneath the so happy to know you and as you can see I also created a little border Actually, I'm going to go a different way this this one I'm going to go with these so this is just where you can have a bit of fun with these different stamps so again the sweet sorbet is quite a strong colour so I'm going to stamp it off over here and then stamp it onto my card there and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit patchy because we're going to put the the words over the top but I'm going to grab I'm going to clean all these off later so I'm going to grab this sort of strange little glick one I'm going to start in the centre and I'm going off the edge of the page and I'm just going to work my way up and I've got a lot of ink on there so I have to be careful that I don't sort of drop that at that edge. I've squished way too much ink on there which makes it a little bit tricky, but there we are. So I'm going to need to clean that up well. So I'm going for the so happy to know you sentiment. And I'm just going to stamp that over the top there like that. And like I say, there's the little scribble. This is a really versatile set and I think quite overlooked. Um, I really wanted the dies. Wasn't too bothered about the stamps, but 
I always tend to get the two together because I'm getting the ten percent off, so it makes sense. Um, but I'm really glad that I've got them now. They they come in so handy. Right, and then I'm just going to adhere this in here. So let's just move that on. Oh, there we go. Okay, turn and press on the back. So, so there we are with our card. Now the final thing that I'm going to share tonight is a quick little project. Let me find where I put it. A little tea bag holder. And this keeps sliding out of here, so that's something that I need to remedy by adding a little glue dot to keep it in place so what we're doing here is we're just using one sheet of six by six paper so again this is one of those that it's great to do with all sorts of um, papers etc so we've got two different sides to this so you choose whichever one you're wanting to to go with and you can use either the paper trimmer, which I will just show. You don't really need to score this first one, but I just like it because I think it gives a cleaner edge to things. And we're just going corner to corner with this first one. So we're doing that and then go that way, I think. If you wanted to just fold it, you can just make sure that they are corner to corner and then fold. So we're taking our six by six paper corner to corner. Next, we're going to line it up at the half inch mark. And you just want to make sure that you're following that half inch line down and you've got it straight if you use it make sure that it's cutting blades out of the way if you're using a paper trimmer I personally prefer to go back to my scoreboard uh, pop that right up into the corner so make sure that you can see that okay and we're scoring it at half an inch and you can see if, if you were doing that corner to corner bit on a scoreboard I used a sharper marker to mark my centre line all the way down so that I can see which is the same line because otherwise you don't know which line is which so just a little tip there so we we'll push this up against the edge and score it at the half inch mark like that and let me bring up my notes make sure that I do this right and so we're now going to put the um, the piece of paper straight against the top and we're going to score it at two and three quarters and then it's just easier to flip it over and do it again at two and three quarters that way, like that. Right, so we've got that. And I'll just move this out of the way. Now, what we're going to do, depends on which side you want as which, but I'm going to actually now fold that as a mountain fold and fold this back on itself like that. Right, so we've got that. And let me remember. And 
just making sure that I've got this right. Oh, I'm going to have to take this one to pieces to remind myself how I did that. Right, so, so I want to fold over this one, right, so I want to fold in the edges first. It's good to have the, all the folds burnished anyway. Uh, and it's up to you, sort of, whether you have right over left or left over right. There we are. So now we can have that mountain folded and fold these back on themselves. There we are. That's it. And all you need to do then, if you've got a hole punch, then you can use a hole punch to just hold the two points together and punch a hole in the top. If you've not got a hole punch, don't worry, just use a glue dot to, to fasten those two together. And then you can use your ribbon to just tie a bow if you prefer and add it with a glue dot to the top there. Um, I'm actually going to loop this. So put the two ends together and pop them through and then through like that. And then if you want to, you can actually tie this into a knot to make sure that it's going to stay where it's supposed to. We've got the double oval punch and I'm just going to use that thank you stamp again. Um, we've got various stamps as well that are to do with tea uh, that you might want to use for this. So I'm just going to stamp the thank you on the plain oval and we're going to pop that then onto the scalloped one. And then I'm going to grab a couple of dimensionals. This is a cute little um, gift to, to do for, for somebody. Uh, inexpensive gift, just as a little thank you. You might be able to pop biscuits in one side. These don't fit too well, they're a little bit bulky. Um, but you could just about manage that. Um, but I prefer to just pop a couple of tea bags. The thing is as well then, you know, you've got one for you and one for the friend. So, so there we are. We've got a little thank you gift to go with the thank you card. So, so, right. So we're skating, skating close to the end. I'll just very, very briefly show you another of the kit items because I've not had time to make this yet. But this is a great little decor item. And you can see you've got a frame. We've got, yeah, we know, you can see what it's supposed to be. So this is the magnet board and you've got all of the magnets in there, cards tape etc um, so this is a, a and you've got beautiful papers you can stamp the papers if you want to um, but you you certainly don't have to uh, a great kit that so 
if you're getting a 50% off an item, it's well worth getting that magnet board kit for that. So, right, so here what is what we've done tonight. We've got our range of cards and our little tea bag holder. Um, so, as I said, if you'd like to place an order uh, by 10 pm on Sunday evening, then any purchase size at all, you will get a thank you card from me through the post. If you spend over £30, you're going to get the Ideas Tutorial Bundle that I take part in. If you spend over £50, then you're going to get the Make and Take Pack for being able to make these projects that we've done tonight. And if you spend over £70, then as well as the thank you card, the ideas tutorial bundle, the make and take pack, you're also going to get a pack of 24 sheets of DSP, mixed DSP and specialty paper. And like I say, I'll probably throw in a few uh, embellishments and ribbon as well. So if you need any help ordering, please let me know. Just message me or email me and I can help you with that. So thank you very much for stopping by and I'll be back on the first Wednesday next month. Thank you. Bye.